What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Friday morning to you, and welcome to this devotion we're doing. Again, a season of prayer and fasting, but also focusing on what's my word for 2023. We've been doing that for the last couple of weeks on Sunday in devotionals. Let's do it again. I think we'll do one more week because we got a couple more weeks of this series on Sunday. It's going to be good. So one of the words, I'm so impressed, so glad somebody put this on the board, um, is that many of the things that are on the board, and rightfully so, are things that you need, that you need help with. And there is definitely a time for that. You pray for things that you need. Jesus tells you to do that. But I love this word because this is one of the words, and there's there's not a ton of them, but there's a few words up there that are, aren't about me getting something. It's about me giving something. And generosity was one of those words. I want to become more generous. This one was servanthood. I, I think this is a person that, hey, you know what? This is a year that I want to step into a greater capacity of serving. And I'm just so excited. Honestly, I think this is so true. We teach this in Growth Track, which is coming up in a few weeks, and, and sign up if you've never done Growth Track. But you know, we talk about this in Growth Track that if you look at every human being has a kind of like universal calling in life, like a universal purpose. We say this, we say that every human being is made to belong. We all have a sense of wanting to belong and be a part, right? The, the other one is, is like we're all made to worship. We all give our worship and adoration to something. But the third one is this, is we are, and this is, I think, universally true, every human being, you were made to serve. You were made to add value to others by giving of yourself. Let me say that again. You were made, this is your purpose from God, to add value to others by giving of yourself. That's what it really means to serve. I think about the disciples. One of the great stories of the, of, of the gospels is that when the disciples see that this thing's starting to come to a close, maybe they start arguing over who's going to be, you know, kind of next in command, who gets to be Jesus's number two, who gets to be his number three. They're all fighting and arguing and jockeying for position and title. And Jesus shows up and said, this is, this is ridiculous. That's not how we roll. He goes, the, this is an upside down kingdom. He goes, if you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven, the greatest is the servant. That's who you want to aim to be. And I love it here because in this moment, he does not chastise them for wanting to be great. He goes, no, I, you have a desire to be great. I appreciate that. Let me just define what greatness is. Greatness is is adding the most amount of value to the world around you by giving of yourself. So the greatest is a servant. Let me give you a few ideas. Jesus, again, talks about serving is greatness, but I'll give you some more. 1 Peter 4 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So think about Peter. He goes, man, you, he's like, you, you had the grace of God hit your life? Oh, well, then all those gifts, those are made for serving other people. You get it now. See, before, when you were living in darkness, you just thought these gifts and talents and time and resources was all for you. But now that you've seen this real truth of the gospel, you've seen grace hanging on a cross on your behalf, now you know oh, all those resources, those were actually meant for somebody else. You were meant to use those gifts to serve one another. Here's another one. This is Jesus speaking, Luke 17. Um, he, he's talking about serving, and he goes on to say this. He goes, when you have done everything you were told to do, sh you should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. He's kind of challenging that sometimes you can serve with an agenda. You ever serve God and then try to leverage that later? But like, you know, Lord, I've been at the church a lot lately. You know, I've been serving a lot lately. As if like, because I serve so much, you know, all of a sudden God's in the red and he owes me a little bit. Now he goes, no, no, no. Serving, if you're a mature Christ follower, serving should be looked at as your most basic duty. Like, oh, this is just normal. This is par for the course. This is what we do. How, why would we not, right? Here's a great scripture, John chapter 13. Um, of course, after Jesus washes the disciples' stanky feet, he grabs the towel, cleans back up, and then gives them a little lesson. And this is the lesson. He goes, no servant is greater than the master, and the messenger is not greater than the one that sent them. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. What Jesus had done in his final you know, sermon illustration before the cross is that he had taught them the way of, of Christ. It's to serve other people. And he goes, you'll be blessed if you do this. Meaning like there is a, 
there's a thing in life that you're looking for, a joy, a peace, a satisfaction, a meaningfulness. Um, where does that come from? It comes from you really fulfilling that calling that you have to serve others. Last scripture, watch this, Matthew chapter 6. He says this, he goes, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. There's moths, vermin destroy, thieves break in and steal. Store up for yourself treasure in heaven because where your treasure is, your heart will be also. I, again, I just want you to have that attitude of generosity. You've got time and you've got talent and you've got resources. Make sure you're using those to serve one another. Can I get an amen to that? Let us all go out and be in the earth, try to figure out how we can bless other people around us by serving them. Church, I love you so much. God bless you. I'll see you this weekend.